Hello everyone, this is Manith. In today's class, we'll be looking upon the British postmodern literature, which starts from 1960s onwards. And I have jotted down some important writers and their important works that you must study from the postmodern literature. You see that the modern literature took us two days to complete it. And I discussed in quite a huge detail. The modern literature is very important. Of course, postmodern, which is contemporary also is equally important. But here there are few things that you have to focus on in the British postmodern literature. So let me first talk about the characteristics of this postmodern age and then I'll go on with the works. Now, in the British postmodern literature, you will see that the focus is on the characters rather than the plot. The characters are very interesting because you will see that in the text, the characters sort of misbehave. And that is why the main narrative is set aside and the entire focus goes on the characters and the subplots. The subplots become central. The subplots become highly interesting because of the behavior or the misbehavior of the characters. Also, in the postmodern literature, you will see that uh, the possibility of multiple meanings is celebrated. Many writers leave their text incomplete. They do not come up with a proper ending to their novels so that the readers are left to imagine what would have happened. Many Indian writers as well as British writers in the postmodern literature, you will see that they are not giving a proper ending to the text. And this brings out multiple meanings in the text. So uh, there is a highlight and celebration of the possibility of multiple meanings in the postmodern culture. Then Along with the multiple meanings, there is also a complete lack of meaning. Either there will be multiple meanings or there will be completely lack of a complete lack of meaning. See the absurd theater. Nothing happens. No one comes. No one goes. So nothing happens. It is sort of very weird. So that is uh, the complete lack of meaning. And within a single literary work, you will see that there is a complete lack of meaning. Then you will see that the narrators are completely unreliable. They will not narrate the proper events of the story. The, the story would be so fragmented in nature. Nothing is going to be, you know, relatable and structured. So unreliable narrator is again an important feature of the postmodern literature. There is a lot of focus on the self-reflexivity. Self-reflexivity is nothing else but self-thoughts thinking about your own and pondering upon the life, upon the culture, upon the mishaps happening in the world. So that is self-reflexivity. Then along with self-reflexivity, I've already talked about fragmentation. Fragmentation is an important element of the postmodern literature after the wars, everything after 1945, after the two world wars happened, everything was fragmented completely. Then along with fragmentation, there are some important technical aspects in the postmodern literature that you cannot ignore. One is metafiction. Now, what is metafiction? Metafiction is when inside the novel, you see the character talking about writing, like play within a play kind of technique. So inside the novel, you will see a character writing a novel. That is metafiction. Then pastiche is also a very important feature of the postmodern literature. Pastiche means imitating there is a lot of copy there's a lot of imitation and there is no originality a lot of paradoxes are used black humor is used what is black black humor black humor is the subject talking or joking upon the subject that is actually a taboo that is not acceptable to the society that is called as black humor talking and joking about the subjects that are not acceptable in the society that are taboo subject. Then elusiveness of truth and meaning. Elusiveness of truth is completely getting away from truth and meaning, trying to find out meaning, but never reaching to a proper perfect meaning. So these are some of the uh, tenets or features of the postmodern literature. These are the common things that you will find in any postmodern novel. May it be the highlight on characters, metafiction, unreliable narrators will be there. Then uh, there would be black humor. There would be a joke on taboo subjects. Then you will see a fragmented world. You will see absurd ideas. You will see multiple meanings. The text does not have a proper ending. 
and so on. So these are some of the ways in which you can spot that the particular work is a work of postmodern literature. Now, under postmodern literature, there are some writers that you need to study. The first one is John Fowles. John Fowles, the French lieutenant's woman, becomes very important because this is the novel which has multiple meaning kind of structure. The novel is incomplete. It does not have a proper end. So John, John Fowles, the French lieutenant woman, is very important. We can say that it has multiple meanings or it has no proper meaning. It is left incomplete. Another is Angela Carter. Angela Carter's, I would suggest two novels, The Company of Wolves, published 1984, and The Magic Toy Shop, published 1987. The Company of Wolves, published 1984, and The Magic Toy Shop, published 1987. Then A.S. Byatt. A.S. Byatt's three novels are very important. One is Babel Tower, B-A-B-E-L. This is um, this is an allegorical uh, novel from allegory over the Holy Bible. In the Bible also, in the book of Genesis, the Bible talks about the tower of Babel that men created. They wanted to create such a high tower that would reach to heavens. That was the tower of Babel in Bible. And the similar kind of idea is used by A.S. Byatt. And a second novel of A.S. Byatt would be A Whistling Woman. A Whistling Woman and the third and the very important one is possession. Possession. Then coming to Muriel's Park. Muriel's Park, I would say two are very important to take. The Prime of Miss Jane Brody. The Prime of Miss Jane Brody. And second is Curriculum Vitae. Curriculum Vitae is an autobiography. And this was published in 1992. Then coming to Samuel Beckett. And you will see absurd ideas in his works. Samuel Beckett's, uh, Beckett's trilogy is very important. Meloy, Melon Dies, and Unnameable. Molloy, Melon Dies, and The Unnameable. These are the three uh, works in the trilogy of Samuel Beckett. You need to study all these three. Then coming to Peter Ackroyd. Peter Ackroyd. Under Peter Ackroyd, you need to study his biographies because he has written a lot of biographies on different writers. So study the biography of William Blake. Charles Dickens, T.S. Eliot, uh, Charles Chaplin, and uh, Sir Thomas More. So these are some of the biographies that Peter Ackroyd has written. Biographies of William Blake, Charles Dickens, T.S. Eliot, Charles Chaplin, and Sir Thomas More. Then coming to Martin Lewis Amis. Don't mix him with Kingsley Amis. This is Martin Lewis Amis, and his two works are very important. Money and London Fields. Money and London Fields. Then coming to Lawrence George Durrell. Lawrence George Durrell. His work, the Alexandria Quartet, is very important. The Alexandria Quartet. Then lastly, Rachel Cusk. Rachel Cusk. R-A-C-H-A-E-L. Rachel Cusk. C-U-S-K. Rachel Cusk. Two works are important. One is Transit and the other is Outline. So, under British postmodern literature, you must study these writers and these works that I have named. Now, coming to the post call writers, which falls under postmodern literature only. Under post call writers, now these are very important writers, and many questions are asked from the post call category, and so I have included this in the postmodern literature. The first writer I would like to talk about is Hanif Qureshi. Hanif Qureshi, and let me tell you the works of post-call writers are extremely interesting. Hanif Qureshi's two works, uh, The Buddha of Suburbia, The Buddha of Suburbia, and My Beautiful Laundrette. My Beautiful Laundrette. Let me tell you that majority of the post-colonial writers' works become controversial. Even Hanif Qureshi's My Beautiful Laundrette is a controversial work. Like Salman Rushdie's The Satanic Verses has been in controversy. So next, let us talk about Salman Rushdie. Salman Rushdie's Mid, um, uh, Midnight's Children is extremely important. Then Shame, published 1983. The Satanic Verses, The Moor's Last Sigh. You must have already heard about these works of Salman Rushdie, a very famous post call writer. Uh, Haroun and the Sea of Stories in 1990. This is the entire title. Around and the Sea of Stories in 1990. Then the last work of Salman Rushdie is Enchantress of Florence. Enchantress 
of Florence. So these are some of the works of Salman Rushdie that you need to fill one page at least while you are preparing. Midnight's Children, Shame, The Satanic Verses, The Moor's Last Sigh, and uh, Haram and The Sea of Stories in 1990, also Enchantress of Florence. Then coming to Vikram Seth. Vikram Seth novels as well as poetries, both I'll be mentioning. Among novels, you can just study two, A Suitable Boy, very important, and the second one is An Equal Music. A Suitable Boy and Equal Music. These are the two novels that you should study from Vikram Seth. Then coming to his poetry. His poetry is really important and vast, but from poetry, I have taken four to five names. First is Mappings, published 1980, Mappings. Second is The Humble Administrator's Garden. The Humble Administrator's Garden, published 1985. All You Who Sleep Tonight, all You Who Sleep Tonight, published 1990, and Three Chinese Poets, published 1992. All You Who Sleep Tonight, published 1990, and Three Chinese Poets, published 1992. Then Meera Sial is very important. Meera Sial's work, Anita and Me, published 1996, is important. Then lastly, coming to Monica Ali. Monica Ali is a British Bangladeshi writer, a very wonderful writer and her novel brick lane is very interesting monica ali brick lane a feminist read you can say then other writers post call writers would be indra sinha hari kunzro gautam malkani these are all very new ones so you can study about them too indra sinha hari kunzro and gautam malkani and under post call poets you can study anit cole anit cole Martin Wald, Martin Wald, W A L D, Shomas Heaney, Shomas Heaney, Shomas Heaney digging poem is extremely important. Then Douglas Dunn, D O U G L A S, Douglas Dunn, D U W N, and Tony Harrison, Tony Harrison. These are the poets that you must study under the post call writers. So the entire postmodern literature I divided into three parts. First, I told you the features of the postmodern literature. What are the common things that you'll find in all the postmodern texts? Then I spoke about a few important writers and their works. Then also I spoke about post call writers and their some of their controversial works. Also, lastly, I spoke about a few poets that you have to research on your own. Annette Cole, K O H L. Martin Wald, W A L D Wald, Shamus Heaney, Douglas Dunn, and Tony Harrison. So that's all about postmodern literature. All the best. Thank you.